Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and I'm so glad to have you joining me today for another Sunday Reset. I just want to acknowledge my raspy voice today. I unfortunately have lost my voice and hopefully it'll find its way back. <laughs> But I am so glad to have you joining me today. Hopefully you find some motivation to check some things off your list. Today we're getting started here in my laundry room. It was a hot mess after our vacation and we came back on Saturday. We had one Sunday and then we got right back into school, which is crazy when you have five kids and you and your husband both work in a school. So. We had a very crazy busy week. It was, you know, full of getting back into the routine. And I feel like I didn't get things put back together the way they should have been before we started. So lots and lots of laundry, lots and lots of things to do. This was later on in the afternoon on this day. And my daughter and I had done a ton of shopping earlier in the day. Today is her first competition when you're watching this video, so we needed to get a lot of things done for her, and now I am in full-blown dance mom today, so our dance mode today, but I'm getting started with flipping over the laundry. I took out the laundry, the clean laundry from the dryer. Now I'm putting in you know, fresh laundry to go into the next load, and this is like a never-ending chore, the laundry, it seems feel like I'm always in here doing laundry, which is why this room gets to be such a mess. Today, I am giving my comforter a wash. I try to do this every other week because it does get pretty dirty with my uh, furry babies, my cats and my dog. So I'm just gonna give this a quick little wash and then we're gonna move on to organizing this space. Because this room is right next to the garage, it is a dump spot for everybody's shoes. My two oldest kiddos, they are the worst at leaving their shoes here, primarily because my daughter has a million pairs of shoes, so she typically keeps hers up in her room, where my oldest son literally has like two pairs of shoes, and he keeps them down here. So I just moved those to the closet, and brought my daughters to the stairs for her to bring upstairs. And then in these baskets, I've got our winter gear, like our gloves and mittens. So I'm just putting all of that back in since we have been having tons of snow and the kids have been outside playing. Moving up to the bench above, we had pulled out a bunch of our beach towels to take with us to Florida. So I'm just gonna get those rolled up and put away. I have that nifty little uh, mesh bag there that is so old it's from Old Navy and I'm just kind of rolling up the towels putting them back in here and they're gonna go downstairs with our lake items until the summer man am I ready for the summer being in Florida for a week where it was warm the kids were swimming we were in t-shirts I am missing it already. It has been so gloomy and snowy here, and I'm just ready for the greenery. Everything needs to come back to life. I cannot wait for spring. So I'm just gonna take a minute to organize all of these items. This is kind of a catch-all for things that we're getting rid of, things that need to find a home, things that I've picked up that I've brought in from the car. So just gonna get these items put away and cleaned up.
This space can be such a catch-all for everyone, but when it's picked up, it really is beautiful. Now I'm just going to take a second to get all of these clean hung clothes put away. Uh, this is an area that also kind of just collects things. This is where we hang clothes to dry. It's also where I try to hang up clothes as I'm folding directly from the dryer. How do you fold your clothes? Do you fold directly from the dryer? Do you pull them out and fold them elsewhere? I think for me it just depends on the day and what the space looks like. If the space is clean, I love to fold directly from the dryer. If it's a hot mess like you saw it earlier, I will 100% put it in a basket and take it elsewhere. But I do like being able to fold directly from the dryer. Use this counter space here. It just makes things so much easier. Plus, I feel like it doesn't give the clothes an opportunity to get wrinkled. Um, but I'm just going to take a second to wipe everything down. It does get really dusty in here because the kids are coming in and out from outside. I'm coming in and out from my car, so it definitely picks up a lot of dirt and dust. So I try to wipe this down pretty regularly. And I know somebody's going to ask about the color of my cabinets. They are in the Sherwin-Williams color. No. Yes, the Sherwin-Williams color haze, and they actually came painted. We purchased them from cabinets.com. They're in the shaker two style, and I wanted something in here with a little bit of color that I could contrast the brick floor. Yes, the floor is real brick. It's from old brick um, old mill brick, I'm sorry, in the color Rushmore, and we used a really pretty white grout that doesn't look as white anymore. I do need to clean it. I think that's going to be coming up in a spring clean with me is doing some uh, deep cleaning of the grout in here, like I said, since we're constantly walking on this, but I'm just giving it a quick vacuum. I'm not going to mop it or anything. I've never had to mop it. Just vacuuming it up, making sure that I get all of you know, the debris and items that fall out of people's pockets and the dirt that comes off of everybody's shoes. And finally, this space is put back together. It feels so much better. Next up, we're gonna move over into my entryway. This is another area that can get really messy very quickly. And that is here, the wall tree that we've got here with all of our jackets. Like I said, it has been very, very cold here. It's, we've had a lot of snow. And so we've got the kids' snow pants here. We also have the little neighbor boy. He's always here on the weekends. And so we've got his snow pants and jacket hung up over here. My jacket, Michaela's jacket, is just always full of coats. And so I'm just gonna hang everything back up and get this area organized. And then we're also gonna take a second to clean up this actual closet here because it has kind of fallen apart over the last few weeks and just needs a little bit of organization. A while back I had gotten that shoe organizer there from Amazon and put it on the back of the door so that my little boys had a place to put their shoes. I know this is a 
you know, wide debate on where everybody keeps their shoes. I know that when I showed the video of putting up the shoe rack, people asked why my kids didn't keep their shoes in their bedroom. And that's because their bedroom is upstairs and they don't wear their shoes in the house. And so I try really hard to have them hang up their shoes here in the closet. That way everybody knows where their shoes are and they can easily find them uh, instead of bringing them upstairs where they have to go up to get them. So Here's a look at how messy this closet has gotten. It's a mix of our reusable bags, some extra shoes, everybody's backpacks when uh, it's the weekend and they don't need them, and things had just kind of gotten thrown in here. So I'm just gonna get this cleaned up. We'll get it vacuumed up. And again, this is just another space that gets messy, but man, when it's clean, it feels so much better. While we're here in this space organizing the closet and such, I'm gonna step outside really quickly and organize the front porch. Everybody's snow boots were out here, including my little neighbor. <laughs> Got an extra pair of boots out here, but like I said, it's just been so snowy. Everybody's been outside enjoying the snow, so I just wanna get that picked up. I wanna mention my doormats here for a second. Both are from Amazon. I'll link them for you down below. I am loving how this looks. I still have my little wintry pine trees out here until the spring. Again, I'm just dying to get things up and growing. I can't wait for the spring. Now I'm gonna come into my kitchen and cook dinner. Because it was so cold this day, we had a winter weather advisory all day. My sweet husband Danny had asked if I could make some kind of soup for dinner and Michaela's request was for potato soup. So that's what I'm going to make tonight is loaded baked potato soup and I figured I would take you along with me. I'm starting off with uh, a full package here of bacon. I am making a double recipe. I'll link it for you down below. Um, and you'll have to kind of take your own liberty with it. I definitely add some more seasoning than what the recipe calls for, but that's just how I roll. But I'm getting started with the full package of bacon here into my uh, Dutch oven, and I'm gonna give that a good browning. And while that's browning, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the rest of our items for the soup. So we're going to need a full onion, so I'm gonna get that diced up. We're also going to need um, about eight to 10 potatoes. So I'll get those ready as well. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the potatoes and get these ready to go into our soup. When the bacon's done browning, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and put it here on this plate with some paper towels to let it drain. Now, I just wanna mention that I have not fully gotten back on my keto diet since we've been back from vacation. As I mentioned, we came back and pretty much went right back to work and I didn't have any time to meal prep and get myself ready for the week and so I just tried to watch what I was eating, you know, avoid carbs when I could, but I was not very good about getting back on my diet. So 
tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow is when I'll be right back on. And so I'm actually going to enjoy this soup with my family tonight. So I did remove about half of the bacon grease from uh, the Dutch oven there. I used a couple of paper towels to soak up a lot of that. And then to the rest of that fat, I am adding that diced onion there. And I'm going to let that render for a little while until my onion is nice and soft and translucent. And while that's cooking, I'm going to come in here to my family room and close it up. It's time for me to close the blinds. These are really the only blinds we have here in the back of the house, um, just because I have neighbors to the side, but I don't have any neighbors behind me. So we leave those open. Once my onions are soft, I'm adding in a half a cup of flour. Now remember, I did double this recipe, so that's why I'm adding you know, this much. I'm gonna let that cook for about a minute or so to kind of cook out that starchy flavor. And this is what's gonna give us a thick consistency to our soup. And once that has cooked up for a little bit, we're gonna add in eight cups of milk. I did use whole milk here. So again, I doubled the recipe. It calls for four cups, but I did put in eight. And we're going to mix that into our roux and get that bubbling. Once we have our milk added in, we're going to also add in two cups of chicken broth. I'm using a chicken stock here. And we're gonna pop that in with our milk and get that stirred up. And then we're also going to add in some garlic. So this is where the recipe kind of goes a little bit wonky for me. So it just has you add in the garlic here, but it doesn't have you cook it. So it doesn't really open up that flavor of the garlic. So in hindsight, I definitely would have added the garlic in with my um, onion. So when you're making this recipe, you'll probably want to do that because it never gives it an opportunity to bloom. Next up, we're going to go ahead and dice up our potatoes nice and small and get those into our milk and uh, our chicken broth. And we're going to bring this up to a boil here in just a minute. Once you have all of your potatoes in, you will bring it up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer and put your lid on for about 20 minutes. So make sure that you cut up your potatoes into small pieces and try to have them you know, be similar in size so that way they cook evenly when they're in the milk and the chicken broth. And then like I said, just pop on your lid, drop it down to a simmer and let that cook for about 20 minutes. If you are busy uh, as a mom or a caretaker or just trying to keep your house in order, you know that multitasking is the best way to do so. So while dinner is cooking up, I am going to go ahead and fold this load of laundry and get this put away.
now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the toppings for our soup. I'm starting off with some sharp cheddar cheese here. We're gonna get this grated up. And then I'm also going to cut some scallions, some green onions, and we'll be ready to dish up our soup. Once the soup has been bubbling for 20 minutes or so, go ahead and check to make sure that your potatoes are tender. If they are, turn off the heat and use a potato masher to mash up as much of the potatoes as you can. And then you can leave it like this and leave it a little bit on the thicker side with chunks of potatoes. But we like ours really creamy, so I'm using an immersion blender here just to give this a good blend and get it nice and smooth. And then it's gonna be time to season up our soup. Now remember that this is a lot of potato and milk, so it's very bland, and it's going to require a lot of seasoning. So I'm starting off with Lowry's. However, I realized I was out, so I definitely would've put more. That's all I had. I also seasoned it with garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper, and just continue to taste it as you go. I definitely needed to add more than what you're seeing here. I just kept stirring and tasting until I got it to the right seasoning. I also added in about a cup or so of sour cream. I probably would have added a little bit more as well, except that's all that I had. So I just added whatever was left in the jar there. Um, but Jeff, definitely make sure that you're tasting as you're going and you're adding in as much seasoning as you need. As I said, it is very bland because it is just a bunch of potatoes and milk. So it will need lots and lots of seasoning. That's what makes this soup absolutely delicious on a very cold and snowy day. Once dinner was done, uh, my daughter and I took a minute to clean up the kitchen, put all the food away, get everything cleaned up in here. I'm going to take a moment to wipe down the counters. I did have a sink full of dishes and that's because the dishwasher was already running. I was going to wait until it was done, empty it and reload it before I went to bed. That way I could wake up to an absolutely clean kitchen, but I wasn't going to do it now because my family was already on the couch watching a movie and waiting for me. So I'm just gonna take a minute to wipe everything down and then I'm gonna go join them over on the couch.
Thank you for joining me today for another Sunday Reset video. Like I said, I hope you found some motivation to check some things off of your list. Otherwise, I hope you found some nice relaxation on your Sunday. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe to come back for more. We definitely have some really fun Sunday resets coming up as we move into our spring cleaning and getting the house ready for the next season of the year. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope that you have the most beautiful week. Take care my friends. I'll see you soon.